What's an easy, everyday way to mess with people? Story 1. The Key Parade. The situation. You and some friends or family are returning to your home. You, being the key holder, approach the door to unlock it. Your friends or family are ideally engaged in conversation and are generally ignorant of your activities. The trick? Go through the motion of flipping through your keys, preparing to unlock the door, realize that you have the wrong key and flip to a new one, then realize that you actually had the right key the first time and go back. Keep bouncing between potential successful lock candidates until someone explicitly tells you to unlock the door. If they say, are you going to unlock the door? You say, yeah, I had the wrong key or something dismissive. My record is about 15 minutes of people standing outside my apartment until someone eventually concludes that I have no intention of unlocking the door. <laughs> Hint for success, do not painstakingly flip through every key. It's obvious and people notice. Also helps to actually try a wrong key in the door, assuming that you know it will fit. The not along. The situation, you're in a lighthearted conversation with someone. If you do this in a serious conversation, you're an a The trick, somewhere in the middle, ideally, while your partner is expounding upon a point, cease verbally replying and begin simply nodding along. See how long they will talk for before they notice that you aren't contributing to the conversation. The longer they take to notice, start disengaging even nonverbal cues and just stare at them blankly. Hint, ease into a state of non-reply. Some verbal responses, such as yes, of course, that gradually become a humming mm-hmm, should preface merely nodding. This trick is actually somewhat dangerous, as some people will never notice that you aren't responding and you may find yourself mired in an unwanted conversation. The handoff. The situation. You're in a public place and are carrying some garbage in hand that isn't obviously garbage. For an example, an empty soft drink from McDonald's. The trick. Hand the empty container to a friend and ask them to hold it for you for just a sec. Fish around in both your pockets as if you're looking for something. Don't find it. Search more pockets. Check your phone and look flustered. Never retrieve the item from their hand. Hint, engage the victim in conversation at the same time. It's a good distraction. The worrier. The situation, you're bored. The trick, text a friend a conversation opener like, hey, are you there? Don't send another message. Hint, don't do this to your mother. Okay, I kind of hate the first one because that sounds like an annoying waste of my own time just to try and make my friends or family get frustrated and then be like, gotcha, wasn't that funny? I'm gonna guess no. I'm glad they say not to do the nod along during a serious conversation, but also like, the joke is listening? The handoff does sound like a quick, amusing little way to give a friend your trash and have a laugh about fooling them. That's the only one I'll give you. Maybe I just don't understand what is funny anymore. Story two. Late to the party, but I have a relevant story. So my grandma is a total neat freak. We often say that when she passes, she'll be found next to a dustbuster. I was sitting on a recliner that was near a small rug on the floor. It was a holiday or birthday, so naturally grandma is zooming around the house doing stuff. I decide to kick a corner of the rug up and see if she notices. Well, she comes into the living room, sees a rug askew, and flattens the corner and straightens it. This happens two more times. I'll flip a corner up and she'll be passing and flip the corner down and straighten it out. Finally, I decide to roll the rug up and put it in the coat closet. Grandma goes back and forth through the room at least five times before she stops and goes, something in here is different. At that point, myself and all the family members that had watched the entire thing take place start cracking up. I got up and grabbed the rug from the closet and Grandma puts it all together and starts cracking up with us. One of my favorite memories of a family gathering. Might sound like I'm just a but she loved little innocent stuff like that. Story 3. My time to shine. In a big open area, just quickly look upwards and look incredulous as to what you see and notice as more and more people around you look up to see what's going on. Works great at Disneyland. Pick out a guy and a girl named Dave and Sarah work great. And when you see someone in a large crowd, look confused and tentatively ask, David? If their name is David, they'll be so confused. But if they aren't David, they won't get mad either because they understand mistaking someone from your past. If someone is wearing a shirt with wording on it and you're walking towards them, whisper the words on their shirt right as they're passing you. Always leads to a great deal of confusion. If someone goes on a long tangent or tells a long story, wait a couple seconds and ask, What do you mean, you people? Pretend not to know what potatoes are. <laughs> uh, you didn't have me until the end. I think mostly because I wasn't expecting that. Honestly, I think that's why it works. If somebody was suddenly just adamant that they didn't know what a potato was, I would probably be like, how have you never seen a potato? Here, let me look it up on my phone.
Story 4. Decide on a victim. Watch their eyes as you interact with them. Whenever they look at your left eye or to something on your left, speak just a little bit more loudly. Whenever they look at your right eye or do something on your right, speak just a little more softly. Whenever they use a buffering phrase, something like, um, or, you know, bob your head slightly. Time your breathing so that you're exhaling while they're inhaling. Finally, and most importantly, if they ever pause for more than two seconds, kick them in the shins and hand them a random amount of money. Refuse to acknowledge any of the above if challenged. I'm not going to do something that I feel like I need to take lessons for a few weeks before I could get it down just right, sorry, but I like the complexity and dedication if you're willing to do it. It's weird. Story 5. I hated my old job and just wanted to make everyone as miserable as I was. So I downloaded a high-pitched frequency app that plays a super high-pitched noise like dog whistle high pitch. I sat at my desk and did it about three times a day in short five to ten second bursts for almost six months. We had four people in our area and the boss man's office entrance was close to my desk. I would play the sound and then pretend that I didn't hear anything when everyone would start freaking out. My boss hired like eight IT guys over the course of six months and probably spent a thousand dollars trying to find the phantom noise thinking it was a fax machine copier or someone's computer speakers. Our big boss even came down on him asking why he had spent a bunch of money on IT workers. I got my lols and found a better job. Wonder if he ever put it together, it was me. Story 6. I work in a cubicle setting and change the sensitivity of everyone's computer mouse by varying degrees. Listening to coworkers yell, stop, or come on, inanimate objects are a real treat. As a woman, when you walk by an unknown couple, casually say hi to the man and keep walking. Allow everyone to enter the elevator before you as a gesture of kindness. Then when you enter the elevator, stand facing the back wall. It's amazing how uncomfortable people get in such a short time. If I'm talking to someone and we're both standing, I'll take a tiny step forward to get in their personal space. They'll eventually step back. Then I'll do it some more. If I'm careful and the conversation lasts long enough, I can steer them across the room. The elevator one would absolutely get me, and it wastes no one's time, so I'm down. Love it. The one where you keep taking tiny steps forward would, oddly enough, not work on me, because when people are too close to me when talking, I've been known to say, unless you're trying to lady in the tramp me, I'm going to need you to back up. Please like and subscribe if you've made it this far. I hope you'll enjoy the rest of the video and have a wonderful day. Story 7. I work at a grocery store. From time to time, I'll ask customers, do you have any poupons today? If asked to repeat the question, I'll switch the word back to coupons just to mess with me. I'll also subtly substitute crap card for chip card, and as they leave, I'll tell them to have a grape day. There was a post about a guy who put small insults randomly in a coworker's post and how the coworker was slowly driven mad until he cracked at the office. Mimicking people's body language, but you have to know you're doing it actively. Subtly touching your nose and ears and watching people do the same unconsciously is way more fun than it should be. When I'm driving by myself, I'll pull some ridiculous face one where I try to look both confused and despondent. Story 8. For almost three months, I would drive by my best friend's house after every day except trash day. He always put the bin in the same corner next to his garage, so throughout the week leading up to trash day, I moved the bin slightly closer to the house. I had a system. He'd always move it back to the corner, but every day I'd move it. About a month in, he started mentioning the moving bin in conversation. I think someone's in with my trash. Nah, stop being paranoid. In the last week that I did this, the buildup was showing. He would go home to check more often, even going as far as to install a bunch of motion sensor lights. Now, being his best friend, I had knowledge of where he kept a spare key to his house, so finally, the day before trash day, I put the bin in his house. He went insane. We're talking about cameras outside, even shopping for security systems. I never told him. Sorry, Dan. You never told him. What kind of villain are you? That's the best part is revealing your insidious plan. I once put 300 cutout pictures of my and a few other friends' faces all over our mutual friend's house. Some obvious places, others almost impossible places. But we made sure to put a sign on the kitchen table that said, Welcome to the night of 300 faces for them to find, so they at least knew how many they had to find. Also, I'm pretty sure they knew we did it, since it was our faces. Own up to your pranks, you cowards! Story 9. If you have kids and you are visiting a friend's house, take them with you. When you arrive, get your child to point to an empty place in the room and then say, Daddy slash Mommy, why is that little boy crying? 
I heard this one on a website once. This guy got his coworkers to put spoons, 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 spoons at the bottom of another coworker's every email, but in white font. Basically, you had to highlight it to read it. They kept stealing his spoons during lunch, and he would keep getting spoon ads from the emails. Brilliant. Story 10. My ex-boss used to go crazy if the department phone rang more than three times without someone picking it up, even though our space was huge and we couldn't always reach the phone before the third ring. If we were even in the department when it rang, oh, and his office was right beside the desk where the main phone was, and he could answer it from his own phone too, but he wouldn't. So one day I'd had enough of that and programmed the main phone line to forward to his direct line. I left it like that for a week. He raged every day. Why are these people calling me for this junk? It was a good week. Okay, this is one kind of prank where you don't have to own up to it. If your boss sucks and needs to learn a lesson, you prank away. Nothing too evil, but definitely evil enough to get your point across. Story 11. I once rode a ferry during some hockey thing going on and the cafeteria was loaded with annoying people screaming at the TV, so I downloaded a remote app for my phone checked that I had the right programming selected, and right when it looked like someone was about to score, I turned it off. And man, would they scream. And several guys lunged at the remote lying on the table and actually struggled to be the one turning on the TV again. One time it got so bad, security had to step in and tell them to calm the down or they would have police waiting for them at the port. I think that's the only time I've enjoyed watching sports on TV. Story 12. When I meet a person who is an arrogant know-it-all, I bring up some fact about the topic they're discussing and they tell me how they know all about it. Kind of like Jimmy Kimmel's Lie Witness News. When I was a kid, I used to pretend that I had a bad leg and I would trail after my mom in whatever store we happened to be in and loudly call to her mom, please wait for me, you know I can't walk that fast. Ugh, nope, don't like it. First, the lowest of efforts even for this thread. And second, don't pretend to have a disability. I know you were a kid, but now, you are supposedly an adult boasting about something a kid thought up. Story 13. Change their computer language to English US or English UK depending on where they're from. The spell checks will drive them insane. Occasionally, I will take the USB for my wireless mouse and plug it into people's computers when they aren't looking and mess with them that way. One time a friend was playing Hitman and every time he would line up a shot, I would move my mouse just a little bit so his shot would miss. His reactions were priceless. Story 14. When you're chatting with someone and they make a joke or something, say this to them. Don't care what anyone says about you, you're funny. Or, I don't care what anyone says about you, you're alright in my book. It totally acts with people because it usually takes a couple of seconds to sink in that people have apparently spoken bad about them to you. I always get a laugh out of using it. I mean, so long as you have that kind of rapport and admit it to them, that's a pretty normal joke between friends. If you don't admit it to them, that kind of joke is called gaslighting. Story 15. Locate your friend's toilet roll stash. Every time you visit them, remove one of their toilet rolls and replace it with a slightly better quality one. Once they've made the switch to buying better toilet paper, they will switch their entire stash for the inferior rolls you previously stole from them. Also, find their main key ring and add extra keys to it. Story 16. Say something at a slightly lower volume than is that is just nonsense, but sounds like a real word. I say, Zerubbabel. Then, laugh or just smile like you don't really expect a response. They'll either laugh with you or when they say, huh? You say, you know what I mean, have you ever seen one of those? And laugh harder. They will usually agree with you and laugh awkwardly. Story 17. Every day on my walk to the subway, I'll pass a particular crosswalk with the same female crossing guard. Every day like clockwork, I'll walk across the street looking to the sidewalk in front of me and not her, and the second I pass her, I jerk my head around and say, good morning, jolts her completely. Please leave your story in the comments. I would love to make a video on them in the future. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe.